what's up y'all welcome to the bestiary my name is Belil Black and today's episode I figured would be a little different you know uh, I was watching last night a rerun of monsters and mysteries in America and it, you know there was an episode of this show on is season two that inspired me to do you know to do an episode on the topic that we're about to do this episode on it was about a family in Porterville California who were uh, you know they were terrorized by this little gnome this evil little gnome and it sounds an awful lot like you know the folklore surrounding the red cap and if you don't know what a red cap is you know, I'll explain it to you and hopefully you'll be a little bit more informed by the end of this of this video but uh, let's get into it well uh, the information is sparse but I've come up with you know a little bit here and there so uh, it says according to spirits fairies leprechauns and goblins and an encyclopedia of the little people by Carol Rose the red cap also called the bloody cap is an evil goblin or sprite from from the folklore of the borderlands between England and Scotland the borderlands are ripe with stories of this evil sprite it lives in the ruins of castles and fortified towers where previous battles have occurred and blood has been shed this is in appearance it looks like an extremely diminutive old man excuse me diminutive old man have a little tongue tied there with hair that is long and unkempt red eyes hideous talons on skinny fingers and protruding teeth its boots are made of iron and it wears a cap that is red and blood soaked according to Wikipedia the red cap also called a powery or dunter has to continually kill in order to dye his cap in blood as the color will fade his iron shoes and the uh, the pike he carries do not make him overly heavy in fact they do the, they do just the opposite they make him very fast and make them quite impossible to outrun now if a traveler happens to come across a red cap in the ruins of a castle or you know any other kind of ruins he is a very unfortunate person indeed because the red cap lies in wait to savagely kill him catching the blood of his unfortunate victim in his cap the intended victim has the opportunity to escape however if he is able to recite scriptures this will cause the red cap to shriek and disappear leaving one of his fangs behind huh wonder why you know I mean, I guess you gotta smack him in the face with a Bible, knock his teeth out. No, it doesn't matter. So, so if you visit, if you happen to visit Scotland or you know anywhere near there and get lost, remember not to seek shelter in any castle ruins. I think a night spent outside in the elements is a lot safer than encountering one of these beasts. Man, I mean, I'd I'd rather you know get a cold or get bitten by some mosquitoes or midges or whatever they have over there then get hacked apart by a fucking red cap now if you think a cold Scottish night outdoors is too much for you the alternative is to memorize a few scriptures on the flight over huh now um, I've got this story talking about you know this uh, evil little gnome that was encountered by this family in Porterville California and uh well let's get into that it says the first incident occurred when a woman by the name of Tammy moved her and her three children into a small farmhouse on the Chul River near Porterville, California. Soon after moving in, Tammy started to feel like something was watching them and had an uneasy feeling every time she walked by the old barn. Now for some reason, most of the animals on the farm seemed to avoid the rickety old building also, and soon she noticed that a number of her ducks and chickens had started to miss, you know, had started to you know to become missing uh, but you know she'd soon figure out why you know 
and I can assure you I'm sure she was terrified when she found out now, it says one night Tammy and her son were coming back from grocery shopping when as she parked the car and got out noticed movement to her right thinking nothing of it she picked up a grocery bag and noticed it again this time accompanied by what she described as and I quote in her words a very freaky and very evil sounding chuckle now looking in the direction of the noise Tammy noticed about 50 yards from her was a small humanoid looking figure or as she described it a gnome now the figure was about two to three feet in height wore black baggy pants and a gold colored shirt the face was partially covered by a long salt and pepper beard and on top of the head was once again a long red pointed hat and the nose was large and bulbous and the eyes were rather deep set she said now as the figure grinned at them Tammy noticed that the grin was almost from ear to ear and the teeth looked to be an ugly brown color and appeared to be either pointed or jagged horrified Tammy dropped the groceries and grabbed her uh, grabbed her son and ran off towards the house with the cackling little man right on her heels Tammy was able to get inside the house and was in the midst of telling her two daughters what she saw when she saw movement outside the kitchen window now upon investigating she saw the top of the creature's red pointed hat once again moving back and forth underneath the window finally after what you know must have seemed like an eternity I'm sure you know the the figure disappeared and Tammy was able to get the groceries from the car now this was this was the only time she actually saw the figure but until she moved out she would always hear creepy chuckling and cackling coming from inside that old barn as if it was taunting her or something now, now that's that's rather creepy man now um now you you would think that this would be an isolated occurrence but it seems the gnome wasn't satisfied with just terrorizing Tammy and her family now in March of 2010 a family moved into the same house on the Tule River according to the wife named Charlie it was perfect for, you know for what her family needed her husband took partic a particular liking to a pond on the property and decorated it with fairy gnome and toadstool yard ornaments stocked it with Japanese koi fish you know stuff like that not surprisingly Charlie and her family also had an eerie feeling about that same old barn on the property and tried to stay away from it as much as possible one night around 3 a.m. Charlie and her husband were awoken by what can only be described as a raspy gurgling singing Charlie and her husband looked you know they looked out their bedroom window and what they saw defied what they considered their reality standing by the pond and holding one of the garden gnomes was a creature that came out of a Grimm's fairy tale as Charlie describes it the creature was two to three feet tall wearing maroon pants and a baggy yellow shirt with a brown vest over it and a dark waistcoat it had a large gray beard and was wearing a reddish brown pointed hat now Charlie went on to say that the most horrible part of the creature were its eyes and teeth when it grinned its teeth appeared to be jagged and pointed and the eyes were small and beady and had a dark mean look to them apparently the creature saw the couple looking at him or it and reached into the pond and grabbed a koi and dropped it into its mouth and swallowed it whole furious Charlie's husband pushed open the window and yelled at the creature to leave the yard and he called the police yeah <laughs> what are their police gonna do oh well let us come over there and help you whoa we'll, uh, see if we can't put this little fucker in a bag or something anyway um, you know the gnome grinned and laughed as he gave them the finger and disappeared <laughs> what the police were called being notified that an intruder was on the property but when they got there an hour later the only evidence that was found was small footprints about the size of a child's around you know around all around the pond and I, I'm sorry for laughing that was just funny I mean could you imagine that little fucker giving him the finger and then disappearing anyway this wasn't the only time that the gnome would visit the pond 
Night after night it would be seen holding a yard ornament and eating a fish. The family eventually wised up and moved the ornaments and put the fish into a tank inside the house. Apparently this didn't go over well with the gnome. Upon the usual time of its appearance at around 3 a.m., when the gnome saw the yard ornaments and fish had been removed, it went into a crazed frenzy and began yelling and screaming in some language that nobody could understand. But they understood that it was pissed, I'm sure. Now it began to, uh, it began to run around the house screaming in whatever language was native to it. The family felt safe until Charlie realized the dog door in the kitchen was unlocked and feared the creature would try to enter the house through that. She was able to lock and then, you know, lock it and then run upstairs to the close, you know, to, uh, you know, to close the rest of the windows and whatnot. Said the last they heard of the creature was a very loud screeching, cackling sound that was heard beneath one of the living room windows. Charlie's husband went to investigate and saw the top of the creature's hat underneath the window. Man, uh, this creature is, it seems to be a really, a really fucked up little individual. You know, it's, it's some interesting stuff to really read and learn and apparently these things have been around in one form or another for a very very long time you know uh, even I'm guessing back before medieval times of you know England and Scotland and all that probably much farther back than that but I find it interesting you know that something like that can also be found over here which means that you know maybe our descriptions of creatures that are so similar yet we give them different names like for example you know we have Sasquatch or Bigfoot in America you know the Yowie in Australia the Yeren in uh, China maybe they're all some form of the same creature at least to some to some possibility but until we learn more about these creatures and uh, where they come from and their habits and their habitats, where they live, we're really never going to know. It's all just going to be speculation. But anyway, this is, uh, this is I guess I'm going to end it here. You know, This has been an interesting episode, to say the least, at least for me. Uh, my name is Belil Black. Thank you for visiting the Beastiary. Take it easy.